future's so bright, I gotta wear shades. <laughs> what you're looking at here is the property I'm checking out it's uh, part of the 1850s girls college that was here um, I'm gonna go in and check out and uh, wear my new GoPro attachment and uh, <laughs> gonna go and check out and uh, see the carriage house and uh, take old Ralphie boy with me all right we'll go up here and get as close as we can take a better look at it but uh yeah, this is an old uh, two-seater privy. I might be able to get over top of where the hole is here. <laughs> I gotta watch it. This thing's falling apart in here. Alrighty, we're gonna take a little tour through the rest of it here. And I uh, hope old Ralphie boy don't fall through any floorboards. We'll go up here. Oh, this is super cool up here. Yeah, definitely an old carriage house. A look down here i'm not going to get too too close to it because i haven't seen what the substructure is but you can see right there there's beams missing so yeah this is a great property i just got to be careful around here not fall through anything all right i'm going to head downstairs here and uh as usual my trusty assistant here he's trying to kill himself i better send him down these steps come on buddy go on down come on he's old but he's he's good at what he does come on you can do it go on Oh boy, there you go. Good boy. Oh. Surprised he hasn't died doing this with me yet. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> One of my favorites, glass. <laughs> well, that's the carriage house inside. And uh, yeah, definitely needs some work. But boy, what a neat old structure. And uh, part of what we're thinking was actually part of the girls college it was here uh, around the 1850s or so so yeah i can actually see up under the wall here into the privy i don't know if we can see oh yeah you can see out the hole <laughs> so yeah that that's it under i can see there's limestone here so who knows how old this thing is that's super duper cool super duper neat with the site visit wrapped up and the privy confirmed all we had to do was now wait for a local contractor to come and stabilize the front and sides of the old carriage house. Once this was done, I began to clear the larger debris from the top of the site and slowly begin to dig my way down to see what exactly it was I could uncover from inside. All right, we're gonna dig something out here. I don't think it's that old, but uh, we'll end up seeing what it is here. We'll, we'll get it out. I think we have to dig a little more around it here. Without knocking the applied color lettering off. There. See what we got here. Oh, it's an old milk bottle. That's what it is. But look at the graphics. Bups. High grade butter. Trying to sell you butter while they sell you the milk. That's pretty sharp. And then I guess here's uh, Bups High Grade Dairy. Established 1905, York, PA. Cool. Cut the top off of that. Make something out of it. All right, we got another one. Here's an amber one. Looks like a liquor again. There's the neck. Pop her out here. Oh, see what we got. Looks like a wine. It looks like it says something. It has an um, ACL on it. Doubt it's old. Oh, it has some embossing on the bottom with a wine bottle or a wine glass on it. Huh. I won't wipe it off, but yeah, it says something right there. Yeah. Probably 50s, 60s by the looks of it. Yeah, mold goes up to the top. We're about two feet down so far, and uh, we found some artifacts. They're all early 40s, maybe mid uh, 50s. But yeah, here's the whole table of them thus far that we've dug out. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm only about two feet down. So I'm going to keep digging down and uh, see what I can find here a little bit deeper and hopefully get back to the uh, 1800s. All right, we're wrapping up day one here, and I actually have a surprise for you guys. It's a ginormous eight-foot diameter uh, round hole here made out of uh, limestone, as you guys can see here. We're actually on the back, so 
circumference of it here. I'll spin you around. I'll bring you up here, you can see it. By the conclusion of day one, it became pretty obvious that we were going to have about twice the material to remove that I initially anticipated. But of course, with this comes the potential for even more artifacts. And slowly but surely, we began to find a lot of local whiskeys, pharmacies, breweries, soda bottlers, and even some local milks. One of my favorites from this lair was an embalming supply bottle, still in really great shape and good clarity. I also found a mange cure bottle from New York and one of my childhood favorites and one of the first bottles I ever found, a Hicks Capudine. This one in great shape too. From here, I dug about two more feet down to a total depth of around four feet. All right, we're at the end of day two and I want to show you guys the progress we've made on the uh, giant privy we have here so far. We dug it out pretty good. We're about four feet down like we were yesterday, but we began to dig back in underneath uh, the building that's right next to us, the shed. So, uh, yeah, we just got to keep getting that out of our way, and then we can go down and uh, see exactly what's in here. But, yep, yeah, just a little update on how far we are and uh, what we've been doing. And then out here, of course, is what we've found so far. whole ton of stuff. So... So far, so good on getting things out. And we even, uh, we even got a mummified dog. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, God. Yep, so far, so good. We've been digging everything out. And uh, we'll have to total up everything and see what we have. End of day two. And this is what all we got. Doing good. I know Ralphie's pleased and uh, special K's on it. At this point, the artifact layers became more dense and contained items from around 1910 to 20 or so. Item after item came out of the site as I dug farther and farther down. It got to the point we had to set up a second even larger table to contain all the artifacts we were getting out. Now at about 7 feet deep in the site. Alrighty guys, we'll go on a real quick privy tour. Here's where we set our wheelbarrow. And in here to my right is where we're digging. And I'll take you down in there with me to uh, check it out here next. Alright, we'll be going down the site here. Basically, I'm up underneath the building here, uh, about four feet back under. And then right here, I have a jack to support anything that's going to move around on me. Hopefully, I can give you guys a 360 view. I'm about six feet down. And uh, it's about seven to eight feet in diameter. There's a little port that comes out the side here. I'm starting to uh, suspect that this is possibly a cistern converted over into a privy because of all this mortared. Uh, limestone. This is my progress so far. I figured I'd make a video for you guys. I wanted to show you guys what I got out of the privy today. I've only been here about three hours and actually I'm getting ready to go home. I'll be back tomorrow, but uh, I did pretty good at uh, just a couple hours I was here. I'll show you guys. There's an old Heinz ketchup. Here's a really nice uh, aqua bottle. This guy, uh, it's a nice aqua color to it. Here's one of the Pennsylvania Keystone on it. That's super cool. There's a little beer, some cold creams and salve containers. A uh, milk. Here's the heartbreaker of the day. Local whiskey. Freeze. Pure uh, rye whiskey. <laughs> I love amber bottles that are in Boston. <laughs> That's my heartbreaker of the day. And uh, yeah, I'm even liking this real itsy bitsy little baby flask too. So I guess it's all what you prize. So yeah, pretty Pretty good day for just general bottles and pulling a bunch of stuff for a couple hours of work. Pretty happy with it as far as finding things. Alrighty guys, I got bottles in the hole. I'll put you down first. Now that I'm down here too, first things first is I gotta move my ladder. Look safe. <laughs> Alright. See what we have here. One piece here. Feels pretty steady in here. Oh, it's a jar. I thought it was a milk bottle or something. Mason. Yeah, Mason patented, blah, blah. The usual. We'll see what's over here next. All right, let's see if I can yank this guy out. Oh, it's a flask. It's good. CBL. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I don't break it. <laughs> yeah, American House York PA CBL. That's super cool. Strap sided like I like them. Nice. I'll have to clean that up then. That's really, really cool. I'll collect up my treasures here. Put them in my bucket. And uh, send her on back up. 
Alrighty guys, I got a milk bottle in the hole here. <laughs> see what she is here, pull her out. Have to wipe it off and check it out. Let's see, uh, one pint. Might be unmarked actually. Just a general milk, but yep, still cool to pull. Alrighty guys, so let's get to digging these two bottles out and uh, seeing if they're in one piece. Just to give you guys a quick and closer view of what I'm talking about, here's the top of what looks to be a blob. And right here, like I said, it's the butt end of a flask, so blob and flask. So I start to get this when I see the corners out on it. Then I take a better look at it. I'll take it out of here slow. Don't want to hurt that blob if it's in there. There we go. Now under the blob. I have a mason bottom laying on top of my blob but I noticed my blobs wiggling so unfortunately I don't think it's in one piece nope not one piece oh man I love blobs well it looks like there might be a consolation prize behind my busted blob here a little medicine feels pretty sturdy if I can get her out slow but sure here well it looks like it's in one piece it's slick probably but still cool at least I pulled something whole out of here just now. <laughs> Doesn't look damaged either, so that's good. There you guys go. At this point, I was really happy with the way the bottles were coming out of the site and dating to about 1890. The only problem was, was that when they had converted the cistern into a privy, they had knocked the upper limestone wall into the bottom, so I had a lot of rock to move around and not want to remove and hopefully keep out of my way. I'll show you guys, I think I'm pretty well ready to wrap up here at the carriage house privy. All that rock I have piled up against the wall there. At this point, that is uh, approximately eight feet high from the very bottom. That's actually pretty bad news. It's getting too dangerous. I had a cave in down here as well uh, onto my bucket yesterday and I had to get out. So uh, every site's worth getting to the bottom of, but when it comes to your safety and it comes to rock, I mean, I just, I can't see doing much else in here other than taking this rock down from up here, placing it in the bottom, any fill and dirt I want to put in with it, so be it, but then pull out from this lower wall down here, maybe some more artifacts going back a little bit, but uh, aside of that, like I always say, it's safety first and uh, yep, live another day and uh, dig another day. So got to do what you got to do when you dig to be safe. Well, you also have to do what you gotta do when you're that close to the artifacts. So I went home that night and devised a plan to begin to stack the rock that was down to my left in front of the rickety old wall that was in front of me and get it out of my way so that I could get underneath it to see exactly what was left. So I used my ladder and I built a platform. And from this platform, I took that rock and restacked it on what I knew was bottom. This way, I at least had a chance to create enough room to get down and into the pocket to see what exactly it is I could find. And sure enough, I created just enough space to see what was inside and slowly but surely clear away the artifact layers. Alrighty guys, I wanted to show you exactly what I found down here. I was bummed out I couldn't hit bottom, but you know what? I did. I'm approximately 14 feet in the ground. I'll show you guys. I actually hit bedrock, and it's a huge piece of it. It goes, it starts up here. It's a hump. Comes back here. And this is bedrock. There's a whole way down into the pit here. Yeah, this more or less has to be the bottom. I mean, it's like an elephant's head size piece of stone. <laughs> it's pretty crazy how big that is. But yep, found bottom. I'm happy about that. <laughs> And with that side removed, I was finally satisfied the site was clear. For my extra efforts, I ended up getting two more CBL flasks, as well as a variety of other bottles from the site. One of my favorites and the last bottle out was this mucilage bottle from about the 1890s. With the dig concluded, there were only two things left to do. That was go through the artifacts, as well as, of course, put the dirt back. For this, I used an old plastic trash can cut in half and created a sort of slide so that I could shovel dirt from the outside inside and effectively refill the site. I could also use my dirt pile as I removed it as a ramp and fill my wheelbarrow and dump it in. 
With the site nearly filled back in, I decided to put a layer of broken debris that I had accumulated throughout the dig on the top of the site. I then put a clean layer of fill on top of this and tamped it down nice and flat. The reason I like to do this is because it can notify future diggers that A, the site has been dug, and B, it'll give them a sample of perhaps what was inside prior. And with that part now completed, it's time for the artifacts. We ended up excavating a 7 foot diameter limestone lined cistern turned privy that went down to approximately 14 feet deep. As for the use layer, that ended up being a whopping 5.5 feet deep, with artifacts ranging in age from about 1940 back to 1885 or so. Over 360 bottles were found in the site, with 200 or so being whole and 160 or so broken. There were also 65 whole and or identifiable small artifacts removed, as well as two 5-gallon buckets of shards I can use for art projects, jewelry, and other things. Last, but certainly not least, this ended up being the third largest site I've ever dug, coming in at around 11.5 cubic yards, or around 12 tons of dirt. As always, thank you guys for watching. And please, if you have the time, subscribe and keep up to date on all of Ralphie and my adventures. See you soon.